New York City's elite public high school. The city's most prestigious high schools. And now to the latest scandal rocking the halls of academia. These are national treasures. You can call them dream factories for immigrant kids. They understand that it's their only avenue out of a tenement in Chinatown. So they take it very, very seriously. 14 Nobel Prize winners is more than what many countries have. And for the three high schools to be able to achieve that, this is incredible. A typical day is going to school from 8 o'clock until 3, and then going to another three hours of study school in order to prep. These people working their asses off. Why would we try to hold back people whose performance reflects what's possible to be achieved in the society? For the longest time, we've got at least three big specialized high schools. Stuyvesant is the oldest, then Brooklyn Tech, and then Bronx Science. They go back to the early 1900s. They're, they're basically formed to educate the most advanced and the most talented kids in New York City for science and math. They passed a law in 1971 to enshrine that admissions should only be by this test so that you can be able to compete based on just your own individual ability. It's you and the test. They don't have to worry about, do I have the connections? Can I call up the principal and get my kid in? Can I make a donation and get them in? Things that are not easy for poor families. No, you don't have to do that. Most of the students who attend the specialized high schools are actually poor. A lot of them are immigrants. Most of them, their parents do not even speak English. These are not grooming uh, houses for the elite with the multi-billion dollar endowments. These are working class immigrant populations from all over the world scrambling their way up the ladder of American society, giving testimony to what's possible for people with modest economic backgrounds and very little toehold in American society, what's possible for them to achieve. The immigrant ethos is a big contributor. You have your back against the wall, you have to study and work. Asian students, is, is, it's, they're kicking butt on every other group. They're kicking butt on whites, they're kicking butt on everyone. You know, when I, when I attended Bronx Science, there were like 20% black and Latino students. Compared to today, maybe single digit percents, and, and it's, it's been on the decline. Out of the 895 students admitted to Stuyvesant for next fall, just seven are African American. Unconscionable that there's only seven black students qualified. Seven. These schools face a huge diversity problem. Uh, on June of 2018, the mayor proposed that he will reform the discovery program. Discovery program started in 1965, and it was a way to allow disadvantaged students to be able to try the, the specialized high school education. The program was, you had to score pretty close to the cutoff score. You had to attend a summer program. It's, it's like an alternate means of admission. But de Blasio manipulated it. They went around and they saw, okay, where are the predominantly of the Asians located? Because we don't want to include them in the discovery. We want to exclude the Asians. We have schools that's predominantly Asian. Those schools were excluded. It's designed specifically to decimate the Asian enrollment. For the life of me, I don't understand how a single black leader could be against a process that says that not 9%, but 45% of your children will be able to get in a specialized high school. That is mind boggling. Man, if you don't realize in the 21st century that affirmative action is deeply problematic for black people, is injurious to the dignity of black people, you're not paying attention. I'm an economist. I would like to win the Nobel Prize in economics one day. I doubt that it'll happen. But if it did, it'd be a good thing. It'd be a great day in the Lowry household if I did. But damn it, 
It would be worth nothing if the committee that awards Nobel Prizes had been picketed by Black Lives Matter for six months before they awarded it to me, demanding that a black American be given the Nobel Prize in economics, which has never happened. So here's my statement to Assemblyman, uh, whatever his name is. Keep your hands off of my honor. Let me achieve or fail on my own merit. Then when I achieve, it will have redounded to my benefit because I will have achieved it on my own merit. These immigrants, these are not rich people. These, these are not uh, Chinese uh, billionaires that are, you know, moving into uh, Soho or whatever. These are uh, struggling families of, you know, modest, relatively modest means on, uh, on the whole. They also come yeah. from, mm -hmm. um, you know, poor sections of the city and they're immigrants and struggling to, you know, for the American dream. Are you pitting minority against minority? Oh, absolutely not. I just don't buy into the narrative that any one ethnic group owns admission to these schools. That test was born out of racism and it's achieving its objective. And that is to keep us out of these specialized high schools. And in fact, it's historically inaccurate. In 1971, 90% of Stuyvesant was Jewish. From the mid-70s to the mid-90s, for a whole solid 20 years, more than half of Brooklyn Tech was black and Hispanic. So th nobody owns it. The roots of this test, they block even the possibility of racial discrimination. It's right. colorblind. Either you know math and you know <laughs> yeah. English yeah. and you get in. Good evening. Good evening. My uncle, 1932, a child of sharecroppers, took the test for Stuyvesant High School. He passed, but they made him take the test twice. He took it twice, and he passed it twice. They had no choice. They had no choice but to let him attend. I know in 2019, kids of color can pass this test. We can. So if the same test was not biased then, how did it become biased now? The problem is not the test. They are trying to distract our attention from gross failures in their system. They want to distract you from the real problems in the education system here. They want the public focus. Oh, let's talk about the specialized high school. Why are you talking about less than 1% of New York City children? We're spending all the time on three schools and ignoring the schools that we can change right now. I haven't heard the chancellor or the mayor or anyone saying what we're doing about those schools. We shouldn't let you and others deflect the strategy away from the three schools to talk about other schools that the city can take care of. We're going to deal with the city and those other schools, but stick to the point. There are schools where 90% are not proficient in math and, Eng and English, yet 90% of them pass their grades. I don't know who's ever said that we're not preparing kids in the elementary schools and middle schools. We're doing a lot of work. Students have come forward saying they were given answers to tests and were promoted to the next grade level even though they had failing grades. Kids that have said that their average was a 45 suddenly get changed to a 65 and they get their diploma. Oh, this is great. We're graduating 99% of our students. But it's phony. You're sending children into the world and you just rob them of an education. Civilization depends on meritocracy. New York City is a metropolis that's drawing in cultural inflow from every corner of the planet, and its institutions of excellence are precious assets to our civilization. We have developed a map of the human genome to help unravel the mysteries of human biology. Mission and liftoff. Liftoff of Mission 51D and the seven-member crew of the...
the comforts that we enjoy, the long life expectancies that we have, the uh, high level of wealth that uh, surrounds us, these are all the fruits of human genius and achievement. On the behalf of the Royal Academy of Sciences, why would we try to hold back people whose performance reflects what's possible to be achieved in the society? My grandparents worked in sweatshops so that I could have a better future here. We should have an equal amount of chance and opportunity to go to a specialized high school. The Pacific Legal Foundation is now working with several families. They announced the filing of a federal lawsuit in front of a packed audience. I want this fair and equal opportunity for my two young children. For the Asian parents, I am so proud of you. Keep up the fight.